Imagiverse Studios presents Tales from the Horror Web, an audio-only series based on the short stories by Gavin Pryor. Tonight's story is called Dimension Jump. Kristoff wakes up to find out it is New Year's Eve again, but something was a bit off about him. He keeps waking up in alternate realities and must find a way to get back to his own dimension before it's too late. Kristoff was just lying in his bed as he woke up from his sleep. His alarm clock had gone off as usual in the morning. As soon as he pressed the snooze button, he looked at his calendar, only to find out that it was New Year's Eve. But New Year's Eve was yesterday, said Kristoff. Something was strange about it that he couldn't explain. He then thought back to yesterday, trying to figure out the pieces of the puzzle that started to come together in his mind. He remembered that he was at a friend's house, celebrating his New Year's Eve party with two of his friends, Justin and Frank. He was also with his girlfriend, Laurie. They had a blast at the party, but then came the countdown to the new year. As soon as the clock struck midnight, he blacked out from possibly being tired from partying too much. I could have sworn I was at my friend's house, said Kristoff. Do I have to live through my entire day again or something? He then looked around his room. It looked normal as usual, but something was off about it that he didn't notice. When he looked out his window, he could see that it was daytime but there was something off about the outside that he didn't remember waking up to. The sky was normal, the ground was normal, and everything outside seemed to be normal as usual. But strangely, there were no signs of animals, but he could hear them outside. Mostly, these noises were from the birds. When he got up, showered, got dressed, brushed his teeth, and combed his hair, he noticed in the hallway that his pet was different. Instead of the black Labrador that he remembered, it was a black cat. He didn't recall owning a pet cat, nor did he ask for one. He shrugged and went to the kitchen to get something to eat. He turned to the kitchen TV to discover something about New York City on the news. Instead of the New Year's Eve ball in Times Square, it was a New Year's Eve cube. No, said Kristoff. That was supposed to be a ball drop, not a cube drop. What is going on? He turned off the TV and proceeded to eat his breakfast, not knowing what was going on. He went outside half an hour later to find out what was going on. For some reason, his house was painted green instead of red. Did he just repaint his house while he was asleep? It couldn't be possible, as if he knew it was different. He went on his bike to head for the library to see if it was still there. When he got there, he was relieved that it was still there. So he went inside, expecting to find a bunch of books on the shelves as usual. But instead, he was shocked to find that all books have been replaced by e-readers. He went over to the librarian to ask what was going on. Excuse me, said Kristoff. Why are all the books e-readers? Oh, it has always been like this, said the librarian. All of the books went extinct in 2012 in an effort to save trees. So we had to rely on e-readers from now on. So I can just buy a book digitally and have it on my tablet, said Kristoff. Well, yes, you can, said the librarian. Kristoff looks puzzled as he finds out that every e-reader has a different book downloaded to it. After four minutes of looking around every shelf to find out that there are only e-readers and no physical books in plain sight, he left the library and went for a walk to his friend's house to see if his friends were still there and that nothing had changed. When he got there, he realized that it was abandoned and boarded up. 
He did not recall seeing his friend's house sitting there untouched for a long time. He broke in and went to his room to find out something different about it. It remained intact, but a poster caught his attention as there was a different approach to it. It was a poster of his favorite film, but the ending was different, and so were the cast. Something isn't right about the movie, Kristoff said. I don't remember seeing those scenes. He ran out of the house and looked around outside. The squirrels were not in the trees or anywhere to be seen. He also finds out that his friends were never born. He ran back to his house, only to find out downstairs that the basement was empty and had not been used in a while. Then he heard something burning. He went outside to find out what it was. When he did, he found out that there was a fire at his neighbor's house. He ran over to his house to try to help them, but all of a sudden, he fell to the ground and woke up in his bedroom again, hearing the alarm clock go off. It was the same date, but he woke up somehow in the basement. Did his basement become his bedroom? He went upstairs to look out a window, only to discover that it was foggy outside and that there was snow on the ground. He put on a jacket and went outside to check it out. He finds out that there is no sign of life anywhere, as if the end of the world had already happened. Where is everybody? Kristoff said. It looks like humanity doesn't exist here. He had walked into the library to see if there would be anyone here. But nobody was there. Not even anyone is in the library, said Kristoff. First, I woke up where my friends didn't exist. Now I've woken up here? This is so strange. He did find an old newspaper on the desk. He approached it and picked it up. It explained that a freezing winter had frozen half of the humans in the entire state, and that everyone will now have to live underground to keep themselves warm. He did not know where he could access the underground bunkers, but he did want to see if he could find someone who could lead them there. He ran down the empty street to see where the entrance was, but he tripped and rolled down the snowy hill. When he reached the end of the hill, he woke up on his bed again to the sound of the alarm clock. He hit the snooze button again and looked at the calendar. Again, the date was December 31st, New Year's Eve. But for some reason, the year was 1986, and it was about to be 1987. Kristoff looked around his room to find out that it was painted white with a New Wave abstract wallpaper. After his morning routine, he went outside and rode his bike to the library to find some answers. When he got there, his friends were waiting. What are you doing there? Kristoff asked. You said that we should wait here so we could go to the mall, Justin replied. Yeah, said Frank. Besides, we also wanted to see the film you always wanted to see. And Lori is going to be there too. Kristoff didn't want to tell anyone that he was waking up to find out that he was in a different reality. So he said this so that it looks like he is interested. That sounds like a great plan for a trip to the mall, Kristoff said. I'm glad you agreed with our plans, said Frank. But are you okay? Yes, said Frank. Just a bit nervous. Justin said, okay, good. When they arrived at the mall, they went to the movie theater to see the film that they were talking about. Even though he had heard of the film, Justin had gotten refreshments for two of his friends at the concession stand. As soon as the movie was finished, a while later, they decided to browse in a few shops that were nearby. They went to the electronics store to see if they could afford a portable cassette player. Kristoff was stopped by an old man who was wearing a white sports jacket, a white shirt with a navy blue tie, black khakis, and black shoes. The old man asked, Did you wake up in this dimension? Kristoff answered, 
Yeah. How did you know? You see, I have woken up here too, the old man said. It might be the earth you remember, but you will find some things that are much different from your reality. It seems like you are caught in a reality dash, or as you might call it, a dimension jump. If you get into a dimension jump, you will wake up in any number of alternate universes. No way, said Kristoff. Is there something I could do in order to escape this? It is not known how to stop this, the old man said. But what you may need to do is to not make everyone aware of this. They might think you are crazy. Kristoff rushed to his friends and decided to keep this a secret. They left the electronics store after buying the cassette player that they were able to afford with the money they had earned. Kristoff noticed a poster for a concert on the wall, but he must catch up with his friends and not stop. He then stumbled upon Laurie, who was feeling nervous. Kristoff? Laurie said. I was able to find you. Did you get caught in a dimension jump too? Yes, replied Kristoff. I was. I don't know how this happened, Laurie said, but we need to get back to our dimension before we are trapped forever. How? said Kristoff. Laurie replied, I don't know, but we might find an answer soon. Let's get out of here. As they were trying to run out of the mall, they tripped and fell on the floor, only for Kristoff to wake up in his bed again as the alarm clock rang. He was now back in the current year on New Year's Eve. However, there was something about this universe he didn't know about. He had woken up in his bedroom, as usual. He walked around his home to find that he didn't have a pet dog or cat, and his living room had no television. Replacing it was a fish tank. He did not remember having a fish tank in the living room, but he would usually see it in the basement. He went over to the library after his morning routine and found out that the books exist in this universe. However, the librarian wasn't alive in there. She was lying on her desk, her head down. He slowly approached her to find a bite mark on her neck with blood coming out. What kind of animal would do this? said Kristoff. He heard a growl that sounded like a mix between a caribou and a lion. It was coming from the biography section. He quietly walked over there to see a creature with long horns, white fur, black eyes, and sharp teeth. Kristoff saw it, looking through the shelves to see if anyone was hiding there. No way, said Kristoff. That can't exist in this universe. He slowly stepped away from the creature and ran off. But the creature saw that and chased him down. Kristoff ran out of the library to find a police officer for help. Suddenly, he fell and woke up again, only to find out that his alarm clock did not ring this time. He didn't even wake up in his bedroom. He was outside, strangely. He got up and looked around to find that his home had been destroyed in a fire. He walked away from the wreckage and tried to find somewhere to stay. But he ended up lost in the woods. And to make matters worse, it started to rain. Thankfully, he found an abandoned cabin to stay until the rain stopped. As he went inside, he could see that the fireplace had already been lit up. He sat down on the chair and checked his phone for any updates on the weather, but he couldn't seem to get service anywhere. After 30 minutes of relaxing, he found out that something had broken into the cabin. As he heard the glass window shatter into a million pieces, he checked anywhere in the cabin to see what made that noise. When he checked the kitchen, he found out that someone had broken in with a knife in his hand. He was also wearing a silver mask that resembled a skull and a black cloak. He didn't say anything and backed away slowly. However, he tripped again and fell to the ground only for him to find out that he was in bed again. Hearing the alarm clock go off, he hit the snooze button. He looked around to find out that he was in a hotel room instead of his bedroom. 
he got up and looked out the window to find himself in some sort of city. He could even hear the traffic. He doesn't know where he is. He heard his phone receive a notification, which was a text from Lori telling him to meet her at the lobby. After his usual morning routine, he went to the elevator and rode it to the lobby. After that, he could see Lori sitting on the couch. He went to it and sat down next to Lori. Where were you? said Lori. I looked everywhere in this hotel for you. I am not quite sure, said Kristoff. I ended up in two dimensions before ending up in this one. I know, said Lori, but we need to find some way to end this once and for all. I think I tripped and fell on the floor before we started to arrive in a different dimension, said Kristoff. So that's what might be causing this. Of course, said Laurie. So we both blacked out to find out that we are in a different dimension. That might be what started this dimension jump, said Kristoff. All we have to do is not fall or get killed by someone. Maybe we will get back to our dimension as soon as we can. Just then, they looked at the television to find that a serial killer had escaped federal prison and was in their city. The news reporter told everyone to be on high alert and report him to the police if they saw him. Looks like we need to be extra careful, said Kristoff. Should we stay in our hotel room? asked Lori. Good idea, said Kristoff. We will have a low chance of him breaking in if we do. Yeah, said Lori. But we might go places first before the night comes. What is this city? asked Kristoff. We are in New York City, said Laurie. You never been there before, have you? No, I haven't, said Kristoff. I might have to show you Times Square, said Laurie, because this is where the New Year's Eve ball drop is. So they went out in New York City for the day to explore some places. They had so much time in the day to check out the sights and sounds of this marvelous city. When night had come, they went back to the hotel room to watch the New Year's Eve countdown on television. After the hours passed, they had two minutes until midnight. This is it, said Lori. When the clock strikes 12, we will be out of this dimension for good. Yes, said Kristoff. However, the killer had already found their hotel room and hid in the closet with a knife in his hands. Kristoff opened the door to find him inside wearing a black hoodie, jeans, black and white checkered sneakers, and a green shirt. He charged at them, but Lori had grabbed a chair and whacked him down on the ground. Why would you do that to us? Kristoff asked. The man did not respond. He apparently cannot speak. So Kristoff grabbed him and locked him in the closet so that he couldn't come out. Then, after a minute had passed, the ball dropped. They counted down to the new year as they stared at the television to escape this dimension jump nightmare that they were in. When the clock struck midnight, they woke up on the floor of Kristoff's friend's house. Justin and Frank got them up and sat them down on the couch. Is it New Year's Day now? asked Kristoff. Yes, said Frank. Happy New Year. How long did we pass out for? asked Lori. For about four minutes, Justin answered. Are you okay? Yes, we are, answered Kristoff. I felt like I was in some sort of... Kristoff, Lori interrupted. Lori reminded her that he did not want his friends to know about this dimension jump, so they agreed to keep this a secret until the end. Kristoff says, Never mind, I am just good now. Kristoff then got a ride home from Frank, since he might have had what seemed to be some sort of hangover. Lori couldn't even explain how they might have gotten into some sort of dimension jump, or whatever might be the cause. They don't even explain this to their parents. It is unknown what it could be, but this remains a mystery for now. Kristoff then got to his bedroom after being dropped off and went to bed, knowing that it would be normal the next day.